good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, my God. The Lord is so faithful. And the most wonderful assurance I have, and I have been reading through this week, is the very fact that no matter in which circumstance we find ourselves into, we have the blessed assurance that the Lord is with us. So, why should I worry? Why should I spend my time worrying and thinking too much about problems and wasting precious time when I know that the Lord is with me? When I know that if I am in the Lord, He is with me. Let me rephrase that. Because it is one thing to say the Lord is with me and I live a life which pleases my flesh rather than pleases God. But it is another thing that I know that I'm living a life victorious in Christ. Amen. I know and I have the blessed assurance that my life is built on a solid ground. That is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And only with this we should rejoice. He promised other things. There are many promises in this word. But only if he does only that, we, are, we should rejoice. Because that is an eternal promise. That he will never leave us, nor forsake us. Amen. So let's stand up this morning with this blessed assurance that we have. Let us all gear up. Let us all thank God for his amazing grace. He deserves to be praised. Amen. He opened the eyes of our hearts. Hallelujah. It's so good. It's so good to be in the presence of God. So let's worship together this morning. Are you ready to worship the Lord this morning? Amen. Even if you don't feel like it, just worship the Lord. And, the, and He promises you that He will be like a flood in your heart. And He will then flow through your worship. Hallelujah. Just ask for forgiveness. Ask God for forgiveness so that you can be able to worship in spirit and in truth. Are you ready, church? Let's praise the Lord together, church. Because the Lord is good and His mercy endures forever.
Alleluia. E volevo ringraziare per Gesù, per praise our God, our Savior, for giving us, our God, your Son, Jesus Christ. So we believe in him, God will have eternal life and not come to condemnation. Lord, the greatest news that this world needs to hear, and it's so difficult for the world to understand. For the attention of this world, O oh Lord, is on other things. The attention is on selfishness and worldly passions. And I pray, my God, that your Holy Spirit will move with power on this island. Father, I pray that you prepare hearts for them to receive the gospel, but most of all, prepare, O oh God, your church, or allow the members of your church, Lord, to understand the mission that they, you have given them to be ambassadors of the kingdom of heaven and to reconcile the sinners with you. Help us to understand, O oh God, this important mission. For, Lord, we can earn many things for ourselves on earth, but if we go soulless in heaven, Lord, we have nothing to show you. So, God Almighty, use us for the glory of your holy and mighty name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Brother Ian, seated. Thank you. 
are being transformed into his likeness, which ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord is who is the Holy Spirit. Abel man en komplot vill bryta sig av bröd. När du tittar på det med diskot och fossil och sånt. Uh, before continuing into the breaking of bread, last Tuesday during Bible study we were discussing last Sunday's service in the preach and something came up which our brother Jake uh, would like to give testimony about it. He would like to tell the class comes up here with him. So I invite Isaac and all the rest. Righteousness or unrighteousness. 
but still again. The Spirit of the Lord can close us with Jesus Christ. One can compare the old covenant, which, is fade, which was fading away, and it did fade in fact. But how can one compare the permanent glory of Jesus, the permanent glory of the Spirit? That permanent Spirit that dwells in us. He gave us the law, but in Jesus Christ that law is fulfilled. That law is maintained and we are clothed with the righteousness of Christ. The law was not something bad. In fact, it was holy, righteous and good. I'm going to read part of a scripture from Matthew where Christ himself stated this. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law of the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen, will by enemies disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Therefore anyone who sets aside one of the, of the least of these commands and teaches others accordingly will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you that, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. In fact, the law was spiritual. God gave the law for man to walk in his ways. But unfortunately, because of human weakness, the law brought condemnation on death. In contrast, and this is the good news, God sent us Jesus, not to condemn the world, but to save the world. That is the reason, or this is the reason, that the temporary, fading glory that accompanied the giving of the law can never compare with the permanent glory that accompanies the spread of the gospel in the power of the Holy Spirit, including his gifts and benefits. So, brothers and sisters, when we look to the cross, what would one see? Only Jesus crucified on the cross, or the result of the cross? The Lord, when he went on the cross, abolished the law, and sent a new covenant by his blood. He gave himself for us as a ransom for me. By this bread that we have in hand, we remember the death of Christ. He wrote the laws in our hearts. He changed our hearts from a heart of stone into a heart of flesh. And by his great finger, he wrote them in your hearts. All this was accomplished because God loves us all. He gave us a way. The way is Jesus Christ. And through him, we can see the eternal light of God and worship him in spirit and the truth. Thank you for taking this great step for giving us the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, the Lamb without, the Lamb without blemish, that saved the world through Him, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Moses had put a veil over his face to keep Israel from seeing that that glory was fading away, which in turn it faded. But those who are in Christ have their veil taken away from the heart and mind so they can have the freedom to serve God and reflect the Lord's glory 